The story starts in a beautiful village that is surrounded by forests and mountains. In that village resides a young boy named Kai, known for his perpetually cold and emotionless demeanor. And alongside Kai resides a young girl named Sarah, known for her energetic and clumsy nature. Despite being a short introduction, those two are the main characters of our story. Kai was always spending his time alone, with no friends or family in the village, except for Sarah. Despite his repeated requests for her to refrain from speaking to him, she persistently sought his company, much to his annoyance. He eventually gave up trying to push her away. Because, despite his attempts, Sarah always found a way to be around him. With time, the days in the village continued to unfold without major disturbances. As the sun rose one morning, Sarah encountered her friend Luna and engaged in a lively conversation. After chatting for a while, Luna inquired about the progress of Sarah's relationship with Kai. Sarah responded with a sigh, stating that things were still the same. Luna advised her to consider moving on, as she had been trying for two years to bring life into Kai's world, but the outcome remained unchanged. She suggested that it might be time to focus on her own happiness. Sarah was taken aback by Luna's suggestion. But I can't just give up on him. She protested. Luna leaned in closer, her eyes filled with concern. I understand, but don't you think it's time you thought about your own happiness too? Sarah retorted. Do you think I've been doing this out of pity? No, I genuinely like him, and I'm doing this with all my heart and happiness. With a smile and a sigh, Luna said, You still love him, huh? Stubborn as always. Anyway, what will you do if I say there might be a way to bring back his old self? What will you do? Sarah replied happily. I will do whatever it takes to help him, with all my heart. Then Luna began to explain the solution. You know that on top of the mountain, there's a garden. In that garden, there's a flower that reveals a person's true feelings when you give it to them. But it's still rumors though. Sarah asked her. You mean that amaryllis flower? Luna replied. Yes, but it might be dangerous you know. Sarah responded. Who cares? I will definitely bring that flower. And she thanked Luna after their short conversation. Sarah returned home with a strong determination, thinking to herself, Tomorrow, I will go and get that flower myself. But at the top of the mountain, there was something unusually dangerous waiting for Sarah. The next day, all the villagers were running around the village in a state of fear and panic. Kai stood in the village, confused by the commotion oblivious to the impending danger. He approached some villagers and inquired about the situation. They quickly informed him, there's a mysterious beast roaming the mountains. It might make its way to our village. If that happens, we're all in grave danger. Kai attempted to comprehend the situation as Sarah's father hurriedly approached him, breathless. He asked Kai about Sarah's whereabouts. Have you seen Sarah? I can't find her since morning. I thought she might be with you. He said, Kai replied, Sarah didn't come to see me today. He comforted Sarah's father. She might be roaming around with her friends somewhere in the village, so don't worry. While they were talking, Luna ran towards Kai and Sarah's father with tears in her eyes. While breathing heavily, Luna asked Sarah's father, did you see Sarah this morning? He replied, no, that's why I came to find Kai to ask about her. Kai suddenly starting to feel nervous. She might have gone there, Luna replied, her voice quivering with tears. Kai and Sarah's father looked at each other in confusion. The mountain garden, she definitely went there. Kai's expression darkened as his mind raced, momentarily disconnecting him from his surroundings. He asked in a strained voice, what did you just say? Without a second thought, he dashed toward the mountain to find Sarah. Meanwhile, in the mountain, Sarah finally reached the flower garden, unaware of the danger lurking nearby. She was astonished by the garden's beauty, with countless flowers surrounding her. She began to play in the garden, momentarily forgetting the very reason for her visit. Shortly afterward, she began searching for the flower she had been seeking. After a moment of searching, she finally found the flower she had been looking for. She was very happy after got the flower. In the midst of her joyful search, 
The beast suddenly appeared, perched on top of the forest cliff. Sarah felt the weight of its fearless gaze fixed upon her. Just as the beast leaped in front of her, Sarah was frozen in shock. She watched in horror as it began to approach her. Overwhelmed with the feeling of imminent danger, she resigned herself to her fate. Yet, at that moment, a small stone hit the beast from a distance. The beast turned its attention toward the source of the stone and saw a boy standing there. It was Kai, fear filled his eyes, and his legs trembled in terror. Gathering what little courage he had left, Kai threw another stone at the beast and then began to run. The beast, now furious, closed the distance between them rapidly. Kai ran as fast as he could, but he couldn't match the beast's speed. The beast caught up to him and snapped its jaws, narrowly missing him but leaving a deep gash on his hand. Kai continued to flee, blood dripping from his injury. He reached a thicket and jumped into it, with the beast hot on his heels. Unfortunately for the beast, it jumped into a void beyond the thicket. A mountain cliff, this had been Kay's plan all along. The beast plummeted off the cliff, disappearing from sight. Though the threat was gone, Kay's legs continued to tremble with fear. After a brief moment of calm, Kai searched the garden for Sarah. He found her sitting, her eyes filled with tears, regret, and fear. She thought she had lost Kai. As he approached her from behind, she was shocked and astonished. They remained silent for a moment, and then she hugged him tightly and began to cry. It took a while for her to calm down, but Kai remained silent. Sarah started to speak, but Kai grabbed her hand and started walking toward the village. They walked in silence for a while until they reached the entrance of the village. At the village, all the villagers were waiting for them there. After seeing the two of them, the crowd ran towards them, filled with joy. In the midst of the commotion, Sarah's father rushed to her and hugged her tightly, questioning why she had gone there alone, before she could explain. Luna arrived with tears, embracing Sarah. I thought I had killed you by sending you there, Luna said. While they were busy talking to Sarah, Kai quietly made his way to his house, unnoticed by the others. Luna questioned her, Why did you go there all alone? I told you it was a dangerous place, even without the beast. There are many dangerous animals lurking around there. What if you had encountered the beast? Everyone began to ask her questions with concern. Sarah explained to everyone what had really happened. After her explanation, Everyone started looking for Kai, but he was nowhere to be found. Sarah pleaded with everyone to leave him alone for the time being, assuring them she would take care of it. Then, a group of adventurers departed to the cliff to check if the beast was really dead. At night, Kai was lost in thought about the day's events, unable to break through the incident. Sarah entered the house, and he noticed her but remained silent. Sarah was her usual self, trying to get him to join her for dinner. He continued to be silent, and she persistently asked him to join. He started to speak, asking her why she went there. She replied with a smile, stating that she went there to look for beautiful flowers she had heard were in the garden. He gazed into her eyes and asked if she really went to such a dangerous place just for sightseeing. Her silence irritated him, and tears welled up in his eyes as he yelled at her questioning why she did it. Sarah silently handed him an amorous flower, saying she had gone there for him. He furiously asked whom she had planned to give the flower to. Reluctantly, she answered. You, I plan to give it to you. Furious, he asked if she really planned to go there just for the flower. She remained silent, and he shouted at her, asking if she was blaming him. Sarah retorted that it was because of him, and he became even angrier. Sarah explained that after his accident, he had become a completely different person, distancing himself not only from her but also from their friends. She admitted that she had liked him even before the accident, and she had tried to approach him, thinking he would open his heart sooner or later. But after two years, his personality remained the same. She didn't care if he loved her or not, but she couldn't bear to see him go through hardship. Kai was confused and Sarah continued to explain that she couldn't stand seeing the person she loved suffer and that her love was the reason she couldn't leave him alone. She was in tears, and Kai remained silent. Then, unexpectedly, he slapped her. Sarah was shocked, not by the slap but by the tears in Kay's eyes as he said, You idiot, do you really think I didn't know that you love me? From childhood, everything he loved suddenly left, and he couldn't bear the thought of losing her too. 
he started distancing himself from everyone, even Sarah, out of fear that she would leave him if he continued to love her. He was scared of what might happen to her if she continued to cling to him. And then they hugged each other. After a while, they separated, blushing. Sarah suggested they have dinner together, but Kai declined, saying he would eat later. She sulked, offering to stay with him if he didn't start eating. Eventually, they both began to eat. After dinner, she offered the flower to him, but he refused at first. She teased him, mentioning something he had said before about what might happen if he continued to love her. He blushed, and she persisted until he accepted the flower. She ran around the house excitedly, and Kai watched, thinking to himself, Look at you, a little while ago, you were acting like a mature lady, and now you're a spoiled child. What a waste, but it's okay to have someone by my side, smiling to himself.